check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts oh. and entertainment scene. This is the D. Brief. Hello and welcome to The Debrief, your podcast about Detroit concerts, comedy, plays, food, drink, and more. It is Wednesday, November 28th, 2018, and I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. I'm Becky Scarcello. And I am the new guy here in town. At least I've only been here a few years. I'm still learning Detroit. You, on the other I've hand... I've been here my whole life. Yeah. So, yeah, I try to school you on the ins and outs of Detroit style. Yes. Uh, I have a lot to learn. I think you're doing well. You you're could, an eager student. You so. could stop calling me grasshopper if you, you don't mind. I would. Uh, I don't know. I'll, we'll see. All right. Uh, on today's show, uh, D.L. Hewley is coming to town. We'll tell you all about that. We're going to tell you what's different this year for Detroit's Noel Night. And there was a nine-year-old from Wyandotte on Ninja Warrior Junior, the TV show. Do you watch this show? I don't, but. I'm also from Down River, so... All right, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is our guest for uh, today's episode. Matt Martinez is a trombonist from Wyandotte. He's a member of Will Sessions, the Woodward Horns, and the Motor City Jazz Orchestra. Uh, he's recorded with a number of big artists like uh, Eminem, Royce to 59 Grizz, Mayor Hawthorne. Uh, Matt, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Uh, look, you know, you hung out with us yesterday. We had a good time. Uh, but there is a story that you told us about that was off the air that uh, we didn't get to talk about, so I want to ask you about it now. Okay. Uh, Carmen Harlan's son got married. And you got to play at the wedding. I got to play at their wedding, yeah. It, um, he married one of the big three's uh, head's uh, daughter. And uh, it was rhymes with Ford. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it was, it was a huge wedding, and it was... a. Big to do a lot of uh, obviously you can imagine a lot of Channel Four celebrities were there: Bernie Smilovitz, Carmen Harlan, a couple other anchors. It was it was a good time. Big party, big production. Nice. Now, how did you get that gig? Um, uh, the band that was playing the event needed a trombone player, and I came recommended to them, so they gave me a shout. And oh, nice! I was able to do the gig and was happy to do it. It was a fun time. Now, can you tell us any like cool wedding stories? Or mum's the word. Um. Probably. Yeah, were any anchors hammered? No, yeah. I didn't see any of that, but that would be really cool if they were. I, I know. Would be, I wish I could have. Right, somebody wearing a lampshade on their head. That would have been incredible. So it was a, it was a respectable affair. It definitely was, mm-hmm. but it, it was the production was huge. It was a very nice spread set up on the property there. Um, the whole thing, top to bottom, was top notch. That's cool. More and you, you do a fair amount of weddings, right? I do a lot of weddings. It's yeah. usually my bread and butter. I call okay. it my nine to five oh, wedding. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's your... Night job. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right, pretty much. <laughs> How was the playlist? Did, you, did Playlist was great. Yeah, it was all um, top 40, a lot of hip hop, uh, a lot of dance music. It was. It kept the night moving, which was good. Nice. Very cool. Uh, you're performing a couple of times coming up. Friday night, you're at Caesars Windsor. Uh, you're performing with Brett Eldridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, Country singer, right? Yeah. He is. I think that he's doing a holiday uh, concert this oh, time, fun. so it'll be like a holiday yeah, you, you don't even know. You haven't gotten a set list? You haven't got a... Not yet. No, I'll get that Thursday. Right. It so, just shows up, makes it happen, makes the magic happen. Pretty much, You know yeah. all the trombone parts for Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer? I'll learn them tonight now that you mention <laughs> it. <laughs> You're also performing as part of Book of Mormon, which is coming, the musical. Yep, it'll be at the Fisher Theater starting next Tuesday, and I'll be playing for that entire run in the pit. Wow. And you were telling us, again, off air, but... Um, if you could tell everybody how how you know when to play. So you said there's a sheet that has cues. Oh, yeah, so on, on the sheet music, they, they send advanced copies for you to take a look at the music to make sure you can get through everything and that you're well prepared for when the show comes into town. And one of the cues, um, well, it, the, the musical's written by the guys that do South Park, and uh, so it's very colorful language in the show, and actually one of the musical cues is very colorful. Instead of friggin' it's something else. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's not a four-letter so like, word okay. that yeah, starts yeah. with F. When Ford? I th- Who's yeah. Ford? <laughs> mm, so, something like Similar. That. Yeah. But a lot That's of those funny. Cues. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. What is it like down in the pit? I've never actually been in an orchestra pit. It's pretty cool, actually. You're kind of, you can't see the crowd. The crowd can't see you. That's the whole intention of it. And it's quiet. You can't drop anything because you don't want to distract from the, the show going on stage. But uh, it's pretty relaxed. It's pretty spacious, too, which is nice, too. Cool. Well, Matt, we're glad you're here. Uh, hang around, and we will get into the show. Action. This is the D. Green. Becky, let's talk about food and drink. Okay, so how do you guys feel about 
having dinner with non-traditional dinner food. So like when I was growing up, I love when my mom was like, you know, I don't feel like cooking a big meal. It's going to be pancakes or waffles for dinner. I'm in. I love that. You love that? Me too. Brenner is the best. Yeah. So I th- I'm i surprised this took so long to come. Brenner? That's a word? I didn't yeah, know that. Breakfast for dinner. Brenner. Yeah. I guess so. It's a downriver thing. Probably. It makes sense. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't invited to the meeting. <laughs> no, well. Um, so brunch for dinner at the block in Midtown, the restaurant there. So great idea in my mind. It's every Wednesday in December, starting December 5th. So Black Metro Eats, remember we had them mm-hmm. on to talk about a Black Restaurant Week. They organized this. So there's going to be $18 brunch specials, crab cakes, chicken and waffles, steak and eggs, along with side dishes, fruits and things. And you get dollar mimosas and get this custom cereal cocktails. I don't know what that means, Wait, but like, maybe there'll be like a cinnamon toast crunch or a Lucky Charms or I, yeah. with Jamesons. I'm intrigued. Oh wow, that sounds really <laughs> right? good. Right? Yeah. Anything with Jameson sounds really good to me. <laughs> Lucky Charms. It sounds awesome. Ugh, I don't I'd know. try it. <laughs> and there's also going to be a DJ and an ox cord competition during the brunch for dinner. The I, Brenner. I don't know what that is. What is an ox cord competition? So it's basically they have an ox cord there. Anybody you know? Ox can, meaning auxiliary. Auxiliary cord, and anybody can go and just. Like enter and say, I want to play the playlist from my phone. See how it holds up to the crowd. Whip out your phone. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's see how you would do in this aux cord. I don't have a lot of playlists on my phone. I have a lot on my iPod Classic though, which yeah. I carry with me. Ooh, that's where really? you keep all the Tone Loke and yes, Young MC. Absolutely nice. <laughs> the CNC <laughs> Music Factory. Probably, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, so there's a new restaurant in Gross Point Park. I feel like we haven't talked too much about the Gross Point Park or Gross Points in general dining scene. Now, I don't traditionally think of they have a bunch of new stuff. So uh, the Charlevoix opened. They're going to serve fusion finger food and craft cocktails. Fusion finger food is? So a blend of different things. So like fusion tacos would be, say, um, tacos with an Asian Korean barbecue or something yeah, like that. Added in, like kimchi on your taco kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Or um, maybe like a uh, chicken wing in a uh, Korean bun, you know, to, blending to, to places. Right. Cultural appropriation in your food. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And they're also going to have different, the, some of the cocktails sounded interesting. There's something called the root down <laughs> with uh, gin, beet, and carrot in it. So I don't know. I feel like this has gotten really trendy to serve like small bites that you can share with craft cocktails. So I don't know how I feel about it. Like in a way, I'm like, oh, I want to go check it out. And in another way, I feel like, well, it's not really unique anymore. And the Edison lamps, right? And exactly. And the <laughs> yeah. metal bar stools and So do we need to start doing tile. that? Do we need to start a list of restaurant cliches and uh, just check off when, yeah. when they come up? So I don't know. It doesn't keep me from wanting to try it, but I'm skeptical already. Because there's just a lot of other people doing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes I feel like the fusion type of thing can just go wrong. That it's just to do a mashup, but doesn't really make sense or doesn't taste that good. So I don't think you can ever go wrong with like fusion, any kind of fusion tacos, though. Tacos, I think, yeah, just put any, anything, anything. In them, I'll eat yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, I Shoe agree. leather, I'll eat. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know, it's, I just wanted to mention it. It's called the Charlevoix. It's around the corner from Atwater in the park, uh, there in Gross Point Park. So Eater Detroit, you know, they they do their Restaurant of the Year winner last year, Ema won, and they have two kind of categories, a Reader's Choice and an Editor's Choice. So the Reader's Choice, if you're um, listening to this podcast, it's too late to vote, but that ended yesterday, Tuesday, the 27th. But um, they have an Editor's Choice Award that for that, they give that tomato can trophy. If you've seen it around town, it's like a can of tomatoes. That's the trophy. That's the trophy. That's the coveted trophy. And the I readers, bought like twenty of them at Costco. <laughs> right. So it's it's really more bragging rights and right. you know having it there. But um, the readers' choice options were flowers of Vietnam, she wolf, albina, and marrow. And the winners will be announced December fifth. So I hate to admit I have not been to any of these four. I like none of those four. Neither have I. None of those four. I have been to two of the four. Which two? Um, She Wolf and Albina. So what are what are those in terms of cuisine? She Wolf is Italian, Roman, uh, a bit of a modern take on Roman cuisine. Make all their own pasta. They mill their own flour in house. It's pretty outstanding. Do they put it in a taco? Not so far, but that might be. I mean, now's the time. I think, yeah, right? I think with our yeah. influence, they might add it to maybe the bar menu or something. But yeah, um, yeah it's outstanding. Albina was 
out of this world, but it's not like you're every weekend dining because it's, you know, $130 a person, but it's chef tasting 10 courses. Garrett Lepar just does an amazing job and it's eight seats. You see everything. And where is that? That is in the um, Siren Hotel. Gotcha. Yeah. And and Merrill's pretty new, right? It's very new. So I was surprised it was on here because I feel like it wouldn't have quite a fair shake because not as many readers would have gone to it yet. But... I did go to one of her pop-ups before, so she had been cooking. We, uh, all over. Her is the chef at Maryland. Gotcha, um, Matt. Are you a foodie? Do you like? I love to eat. Yeah, and I love a lot of. I, I think the, one of the best things about the Detroit Renaissance, as people call it, is the rise of restaurants and so many great, high-quality restaurants in Detroit. You got any favorites? Uh, I, I've been to Ema. I went there last year, and it was phenomenal. Um, I love Katoy. I think it's called now. Right, that's the right way, not the other way. Takoy. And, and, and where is it? Uh, Katoy's on Michigan Avenue down in Corktown. Uh, it's uh, like Thai fusion cuisine. Um, my all-time favorite spot involves tacos. It's Hot Taco behind Fox Theater. Mm-hmm. I've worked hard to try to get a sponsorship there. The only trombone player being sponsored it hasn't happened yet, but I will still oh, post it from should. there. Oh, it should. You're always posting about that. I love tacos. We'll, we'll put in a good word. Didn't you see like some altercation there or something one time? Um, there was... it, it was probably me fighting over a taco. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So you want a good word? Should we talk to Hot Taco before or after we talk to Stevie Wonder? Uh, Stevie first. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's more important. <laughs> so there's a, a new opening, highly anticipated, because this has taken three years to come to fruition. Uh, but it's the the newest um, restaurant in the Working Class Outlaws group. So they own Public House and Imperial. And we've talked to Chef Brandon Zarb, who used to be their corporate chef. They have a new one. His name is Nick Irvin, and he's moving all the way from L.A. to to run this new place. It's a Japanese izakaya-style restaurant. It's called Antihero. So that is that. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but izakaya is like a gastropub, a casual bar-type place that's on, you know, regular neighborhoods in Japan where basically the point is to get drunk but have good food while you're doing it. So, shareable food. That's a laudable goal right there. I can support that. That's like a Detroit bar right there. Yeah. So it's next door to Public House on Nine Mile in Ferndale. And some of the things sound really yummy to me. Black garlic chickpea fritters, a bunch of ramen dishes, chicken fried tofu, all those, you know, salty uh, unami flavors of Asian sauces and seasoning and really reasonable prices, uh, which I think is nice, nice and approachable. And the drinks will include sakis, uh, something called soju, which I've never had. It's a national drink of Korea, apparently. And different cocktails, beers on tap, and a Sun Suntory Toki highball machine. This is the first of its kind in Michigan. So right from the machine, it mixes super carbonated water with whiskey. Oh man! So you have like this whiskey soda, but on a elevated level, more like a a champagne type of bubbles. So. That sounds cool. I'm, yeah. in, I'm into the sakis as well. I like to go in and every once in a while do a flight of something like that to to try mm-hmm. different. You see what the differences are, especially something like that where you're not sure. Well, how different can they right. be, or whatever? And they can they be. Are. Yeah. I mean, I'm not knowledgeable about sake by any stretch, but I, I love the concept. You'll give that's it a really try. Cool. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Coming up in just a few, we'll tell you all about the uh, DL Hewley show that's coming to town. Keep up with us. The D. Download our mobile app. The D. Free. Becky Noel Knight's coming back to town. You've got all the details, right? No, maybe not all because it's enormous and many, many people go and there's so many places open and participating in this. So this has been going on since 1973. It's what they would refer to as the cultural center's open house of the season. So people stay open late. There's all kinds of specials, performances, you know, dancing and music and uh, buggy rides with horses. Um, so it's, it's a really fun event and kind of the kickoff of the holiday season, I would say, next to the tree lighting campus marshes. But this has been going on even longer. So things like the WDET studios will be open and you can take a tour and get some free hot chocolate. Uh, different art galleries will have sales of local art artists work. So I wanted to focus on what's new this year. So it's a little bit different format. So now it's expanded to daytime. It used to only strictly be a few hours in the evening. 
Now you can go during the day and it's a little bit more geared towards family. It was always family friendly, but the things during the day are a little bit more geared towards kids. So for instance, in museums. And there's a reason for this change, right? Yeah. So it's just grown. It's so popular. And, you know, when you get 10,000 people, you know, in the streets of Detroit in a span of a couple hours, that's tough to manage the crowds. Yeah, there were some issues last year. Yeah, there was unfortunately a shooting. Right. I mean, it was not random. It wasn't targeted because people were at Noel night. It was uh, basically an argument among teenagers. Yeah, it's America. That, this happens, you know. But unfortunately, yeah, no, unfortunately it happens yeah. way too much. But uh, I think just to address that uh, crowd control aspect is, is what is leading to this and just sort of spread it out a little bit because so many people are interested so the museums and places like Center for Creative Studies will be open more daytime, like say 11 to 5-ish. And then after 5 uh, is more the galleries, the shops, uh, music venues. There's always an annual community sing-along that kind of tips off the whole event. It's uh, run by the Salvation Army. They moved the stage this year to take it a little bit off of Woodward to kind of control the flow that way as well. Tons of partners, like I said. So all the favorites, all the museums. But some new ones this year are Bakersfield, Cobb's Corner. That's a new, uh, brand new bar. It's adjacent to the Del Pryor Gallery and Tulani Rose on Cass in Midtown and Tulani Rose and Del Pryor will have a nice holiday market. And then you've got Cobb's Corner where you can grab a drink. Uh, Common Pub is added this year. Detroit Shipping Company, Second Best Bar. You know, a lot of these are just new venues in town. So have you been to any of these? Are there any of these on your list of places to go to? Uh, I would like to check out Detroit Shipping Company. I've heard a lot of good stuff yeah, about that. It's that's really cool fun. Space. Yeah. So that's all these shipping containers that they right. that they put in. A and, food hall. Mm-hmm. And there's always music or DJ or an art exhibit. and Comedy on Sunday comedy, nights. Yeah. Comedy. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the change this year. So I encourage everybody to look on online at the Noel White Noel Night website itself, but also all your favorite venues kind of have something cool, like either a sale or a cool singer that's going to be there or some free cider, those types of things. You're going to be there, right? I will be there. I'll be there uh, uh, Saturday, obviously, Noel Night, mm-hmm. 5 to 6 at the Garden Theater with Melvin Davis. Oh, cool. Nice. Yeah, it'll be a fun time. Is there going to be a few performances there? Maybe? I think that it will probably be the rest of the whole night. I think from 5 to 10 the whole night there will be someone programmed. And that's an awesome venue. Oh, it's a beautiful So room. cool. So if I'm hearing you right, the way to do this is if you're coming with young kids, with the family, go during the day mm-hmm. and then send them home in an Uber. There you go. And then go out and party all all evening. Yeah. Long. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like some wild party, but it's just more No, I was, I was there last night. I mean, or last, last year. year. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it uh, is. Actually. It is. It, it's it very really like cool. community and feel good and just one of those events that you want to be a part of. Absolutely. You know, you can bounce in and out of different venues. It's all walkable, even more so now. And it's a great way to see how... Pockets have filled in, too, where it's just in past years, you maybe could walk a block or two without anything. Now it's like pretty much continuous there in Midtown, the Cultural Center. So the D your guide to the choice arts and entertainment scene. All right, let's take a quick look at some of the things that are happening on stages around town in the next week. On Thursday, the 29th, D.L. Hughley is going to be at the soundboard. Uh, He actually has a syndicated radio show here in town. He does afternoons on 105.9 KISS. uh, And very funny guy uh, that you can check out. But if you're looking for other comedy on that night, Donnell Rawlings is going to be over at St. Andrew's Hall. Uh, Saturday, December 1st, you have the Trailer Park Boys. Do you guys know this TV show? Unfortunately, I do. (laughs) (laughs) It's on in my house way more than I would like because I have a teen boy that's obsessed with it. Well, he's an adult now. I should I should give him credit. He's eighteen. But he's he's been a fan. I didn't realize this is a Canadian mockumentary. Uh It's been on the air for twelve years. Wow. I didn't know that either. That's a long time. That is a long time. So I, that's I, a lot of old episodes you can watch. It's, wow. Yeah. It's seemingly a never-ending supply. So I don't I don't know a lot about it. It's Ricky, Julian, Bubbles, and Randy. Uh, they're all going to be at the Masonic Temple. I was actually reading about the show, and it's basically them on stage playing games, talking to each other, singing some songs. Like, nice. Just, you know, I mean, to turn it into a show, I guess, uh, is might pretty... Might be an early Christmas gift. Yeah, that might... it's some ticket. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like what Matt was saying, the queue for um, Book of Mormon. Mm-hmm. A lot of those friggin' <laughs> over and over and over and over. We're radio friendly, so I can't say, but you know right. what I mean. Right, a lot of... A lot of I, I think just every time we want to say the F word, we should just say Ford. Ford. <laughs> 
I think well. we might be able to get a sponsorship. That was not my idea. Yeah, no. I was like... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Saturday, December 1st. Also, uh, Warren Miller uh, has Face of Winter. Do uh, you guys know who Warren Miller is and know the deal? I didn't until you told me about it. So I didn't know about this either until I started working in radio, and it was a really big deal in New England. Warren Miller puts out these films every year, and at this point, he hasn't been involved since the early 2000s, uh, and he passed away, actually, in January. Hmm. But there's still the organization that bears his name, and so they put out these films that are about uh, extreme skiing or snow boarding and you know stunts and people flipping and doing all kinds of cool stuff and they've got a huge fan base i mean they've been doing this forever so they're showing warren miller's face of winter at the royal oak music theater on saturday uh then of course december 4th as we've mentioned before we've got the big show book of mormon's gonna be at the fisher theater starring none other than matt martinez on trombone go for the music okay, yes. thank you yes <laughs> do you know what you're playing for that what like what advanced details do you have about this show so usually with musicals they send you some music to look at ahead of time. So I have the full book at my house right now that I've been playing through and hopefully we'll be ready by December 1st. Wow. You don't have to watch every episode of South Park, though. Well, it's my plan to. I don't have to. Okay. <laughs> you know it's this Saturday, right? Oh, uh, yeah. I gotta go right yeah. now. <laughs> that show's been on longer than Trailer Boys. <laughs> That's true. Um, this musical, of course, was written by Trey Parker and Matt Stone of South Park. It's won nine Tonys, including Best Musical and a Grammy for Best Musical Theater Album. Oh, so, see, I read that wrong. So it starts the fourth. Sorry, you oh, have sure. till uh, Tuesday. A couple extra days. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> yes. Close one. Uh, but yeah, nine Tonys and a Grammy for best musical theater album. So no pressure. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, opening in theaters this weekend, you've got A Christmas Carol at Wayne State's Bonstella Theater in Midtown. Uh, closing this weekend, this is your last chance to see Doubt, a parable at the Open Book Theater uh, Company in Trenton, and Well-Intentioned White People at the Matrix Theater Company. Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle in Royal Oak has a favorite coming back. Kathleen Madigan, big name, but she always comes back and plays the Comedy Castle because it's one of her favorite clubs uh, in America, so she'll be there. And at the Punchline in Southfield, you've got Robert Powell. This is the Deep Breathe. Becky, any uh, news catch your attention this week? Yeah, so Wyandotte jumped out at me at this story, and then as I read more, it's it's pretty heartwarming and cool. So it's a nine-year-old gymnast from Wyandotte has been competing on the American Ninja Warrior Junior Show. So I don't watch this show. This is but this is one of those, I know what it is. Like you've got these really weird obstacle courses that are above water, and you're swinging from monkey bars. Yeah, or learn ropes more about or... it. They have sonic swing, TikTok, spin cycle, warped wall. Those are the names of the obstacles. That's intimidating. And for oh, a yeah. nine year old, I mean, he's the youngest in it. This junior uh, competition starts at age nine, and I think goes up to fourteen as the different divisions. But wow, to be accepted and, and go on TV for this, he's been training literally since he was born because his mom owns the Downriver Gymnastics uh, gym so in what, Southgate. So what's this kid's name? His name is Jackson Cook, but he prefers Jack. So mm. Jack Cook. He's in fourth grade. He's homeschooled. And they, I saw a picture of him doing that flagpole pose So where he's kind of out like Superman. He can hold himself just by his arms straight out horizontally. That's crazy. I there know. I Did, know. You're from Wyandotte. Do you know this kid? I don't, but Wyandotte heard? represent number one. That's yeah. fantastic. Because <laughs> you have kids. Like, I do. I actually have a nine-year-old who yeah. would probably love to be on this show. Oh. She'll practice climbing up the door frame. And, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, like a Spider-Man. It's pretty crazy. Wow. Yeah. So this is his training program. He trains three hours a day, five days a week in strict gymnastics. And he does parkour two hours a day, four days a week. <laughs> parkour is that stuff that shows up on the YouTube videos where it's just guys running around doing crazy stuff, well, right? Well, yeah, but it's it's kind of based in military training, like obstacle course, like, you know, crawling under the barbed wire and that kind of thing. But yeah, parkour that you see in videos is like people jumping over park benches and doing flips off of, you know, sidewalks and stuff like that. So. I put up my Christmas lights and cleaned out my rain gutters this weekend, and like I can't move. I don't know. <laughs> Technically, that, that's do parkour, this. right? Yeah, that's yeah. parkour. Also, yeah. you're not nine. I am not nine. You're not nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> apparently, his mom almost gave up on the application. She said it took her over 10 hours to complete it. So, what? they really wow. vet these people out. She said it was 10 pages. You had to submit all these videos of your kid, you know, doing things physically. So, pass the drug she, test. She was, well, <laughs> 
she said, you know, she almost gave up on it because it was like a day or two before the deadline. So, but good thing she didn't because he's advanced. So he's done the seating round, the knockout round, and the final showdown, and now he's on the semifinals. So he's made it like super far already. Nine nice. years old. Nine years old. Good, good for Jack, Jack yeah. Cook from Wyandotte. Represent yes. Wyandotte. Yes. <laughs> Would you ever do one of these shows? Uh, when I was nine, yes. Yeah. Current sure. age, no. <laughs> Heck no. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, good for him. This is the D. Detroit. This is the D. Breathe. All right, there it is, Matt. Another show. Uh, before we go, though, we have a little game that we like to play. Are you ready? I like games. Here's how this works. We're going to ask you for a series of rapid-fire recommendations. We just want you to tell us the very first thing that comes to your mind. Starting with this. What is your favorite Detroit dive bar? I'd have to say the old Miami when, on the area, which I still call Cass Corridor, because that outdoor patio and drinking in the summer, that's a good time. Are we not calling it Cass Corridor anymore? Well, is, is that Detroiters done? do. Right. Yeah. But everybody else, what is everybody? What, what, Midtown. I hear a lot of Midtown still, they, which just, is cool, too. Yeah, yeah. But right, I still call fine. it Cass Corridor. I might have to just stick with the cool kids there. You should. You should. How about, okay, you're leaving the kids at home, romantic date, best place to go in Detroit. DIA. I think the art there is one of a kind, and it's people don't realize how much um, singular art we have there that's not available anywhere else. I I think it's uh, Van Gogh's self-portrait is there, the Rivera Court. Um, It's a beautiful night, and it's cheap, too. It's free. That's true. (laughs) Friday nights, they do those performances in Rivera Court. Have you ever had the opportunity to do one of those? I have. I've played a couple there in the Rivera Court, and I've played in the theater, the which where the DFT is located out oh. of. Too. I've played in there, too. Wow. Doesn't He's I, played those everywhere. Nice rooms. I try to get around. Yeah. yeah. Musically. <laughs> right. <laughs> we only get the best guest co-hosts. How about your favorite place when you're not playing, place to see a concert? Ooh, that's a good question. There's a lot of great venues in Detroit. Um, it's hard not to to have it's hard not to have a good time in any of them. I would say the Fox. That room is beautiful, and I love playing it, and I love being there, and it makes me feel like I'm a little kid again. Yeah, I agree. It's so beautiful, and I always kind of forget, and then I go in, and I'm like, gosh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Now you have kids, right? I do. Uh, how old? I have eleven, nine, and seven. All right. Where is your favorite place in Detroit to throw a kid's birthday party? Ooh, to throw a kid's birthday party. Probably at one of the many beautiful Detroit parks. We had um, uh, my kids for each of their days. We'll take them out for their day. And we've been to Beacon Park plenty of times. We've been to the Riverfront Park plenty of times. Uh, There's so many cool, great parks to take your kids to in Detroit, all over Detroit, not just downtown. I was going to say, you can't forget to mention Bishop Park. Oh, there is Bishop Park. The classic in Wyandotte represent again, Mm -hmm. right on the river. Beautiful. How about, okay, it's a holiday season. You need gifts for people. What is your favorite place to go shopping in Detroit? Or, or Metro Detroit, to buy unique gifts. To buy unique gifts, there is a place in Wyandotte called Glowfish Studios that has a lot of unique gifts to Star Trek fans. Seth and <laughs> I'm in. Um, I, I guess I'll have to go there. I, I need a for your Serenity Christmas ornament. They might actually have something oh, like that there. I want that. Uh, but definitely Glowfish. Nice. Uh, the weather is just starting to get gross outside. When it is raining or snowing or sleeting, where is your favorite place to go? Ooh, I mentioned the DAR already, so I can't use that one. Maybe um, I like, I enjoy watching movies. So the DFT inside of the DIA is an a awesome place to get taken in like a Sunday afternoon. You can see like a, a Miyazaki film or you could see a Kurosawa or any of the wonderful artists they have coming through there. Nice. Um, how about a weird Detroit trivia fact that you've learned? Hmm. A weird Detroit trivia fact. I can tell you a weird experience that I have anytime I'm down in Midtown. So I went to school at Wayne State University. And when I was going there, it was nothing like it is now. So I would leave my music theory class, which was on uh, Schaefer, or in the Schaefer Music Building on Cass. I could walk or drive two blocks away and there'd be an empty lot full of prostitutes or ladies of the day, if you will. And now there is... Day? Well, it was two o'clock in the afternoon, so it was a twenty-four hour operation. Oh, yeah. yeah, all right. I now there's know. like a Starbucks and a Jimmy John's and all that <laughs> stuff. So it's really crazy to see wow. the change and transformation the area has come through. And I love it; it's fantastic. But it's so starkly different to the experience I had—the first experience I had in Midtown or then Cass Corridor. 
All right. Nice job. Yeah, you passed. Thank you. Flying colors. Very we believe that you're a true Detroiter. I, I good, definitely. Good, good recommendation. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, look, I want to say thank you, Matt Martinez, trombonist from Wyandotte, for joining us today. Again, people can can catch you. You're performing all around Everywhere. town. Everywhere. You are a oh trombonist gosh. for hire. So if anybody's sitting there thinking, you know, I need a trombonist. And by the way, you can also recommend like a flautist or a, a saxophonist or a, you know. I have Drummer, a whole, everything. You got a little black notebook with, a, with everybody. In there, all right. Good and to you've know. been able to do this professionally in Detroit so successfully for 15 years. Yep, that's that's, a, yep. that's amazing. I know, I love it. I, and what amazes me is that you don't have to necessarily go out on tour, leave your kids and your family, and you know, at well, home. Yeah, I can do it all here, which is a very great luxury for me. So, so you're going to be performing as part of Book of Mormon. That's correct. Uh, you're also going to be performing at Caesar's Windsor with Brett Eldridge. And Will Sessions, the band that you're in, mm-hmm. has a brand new album. Tell everybody how they can go get it. You can get it at uh, willsessions.bandcamp.com or all the streaming services, Apple, iTunes, Google, all those, Amazon. Makes a great gift. It does. And don't forget to go see uh, Too Hot to Handle, the jazz gospel uh, uh, messiah that's happening over at Detroit Opera Theater uh, this Saturday night. That's going to be an absolute fantastic show. You can hear my full interview with the conductor and artistic director. We will have that in our mobile app, so you can go check that out. Also, check out our gift guide if you haven't yet. It's yes, it's this is good. Chock full. Is... I mean, really chock full of local gift ideas, experiences at all types of shops. Recommended by lots of our friends of the podcast, like we... Andalisi and Steve Johnson and Bailey Sasoy Isgro. People that know Detroit. We had Gary Graff. Mm-hmm. We had Aaron Foley. We had so many people. It, it, I, I really love this episode. I really did. Listening I know. Back to it. I want to do it. These more are good ideas. Often. Maybe uh, we do like a Mother's Day and a Father's. Day we and should. different we should things. Come up with but something. Yeah, and we'll be putting a bunch of stuff on social media already started on our Twitter and Facebook and Instagram with pictures and uh, links to where you can get these gifts. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah, everything is on our website, thedebriefdetroit.com. So go check that out. Matt Martinez, thank you very much. Thank you. Detroit's moving. Keep up. The Debrief, your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.